Okay, so the oscillating pendulum, here's our graph of position and velocity for the oscillating pendulum. Was the acceleration constant or changing and how can you tell? Well, here we see on the velocity graph, the slope of the graph is changing at all times. So we know that the acceleration then is changing at all times. Number two, was there any point in the motion where the velocity was zero? And how can you tell? Well, there's two ways to tell from the position graph. The slope is zero here, here, here. And the value on the velocity graph is zero here, here, here. And I can use this vertical line to show that where the slope is zero, I see the value of velocity is zero. The slope is zero. The value of velocity is zero. Number three, was there any point where the acceleration was zero? So yes, that is going to be right here and right here. That's when the, vel the velocity graph has a slope of zero. And again, we see that when the slope of the velocity graph is zero, that is the midpoint of the position right in here, that it's halfway between the max and min position. The midpoint of the oscillation is where the acceleration is zero. And where was the pendulum bob when the acceleration was the greatest? Well, we see here the slope of the velocity graph is zero here, then it's increasing, then it decreases back to zero. So halfway is the inflection point. So right there is going to be where the acceleration is maximum. And in terms of where that is on the swing, that is at the extreme end point of the swing. Here, so at the far right and the far left of the swinging pendulum is where the acceleration is the greatest. Okay, part two, student jumping in the air. Let's take a look at that picture. Here is our position. Remember that the motion detector is above my head. So as I bend my knees to crouch down to begin to jump, my head gets further away from the sensor. Then I begin to push off and my head, I go up into the air. My head is now the closest to the sensor. And then I come back to the ground and I land on the ground and bend my knees. And then I stand straight back up. Question five, identify and label on your graph when the jumper was airborne. So that's going to be this shaded gray area. It's not this part. This part you can see the velocity is increasing in magnitude, so I'm pushing off the floor here. So I'm not in the air yet. Once I get in the air, now acceleration due to gravity is constant, and the slope of my velocity graph is constant. Number six, was there a point in the airborne motion where the velocity was zero? Yes, the velocity is zero here at my highest point of my jump. Number seven, was there any point in the airborne airborne motion where the acceleration was zero? The answer is no. Nowhere in my airborne part of the jump is the slope of this graph zero. It is constant. And if you see over here, I have fit a best fit line to it. It's actually 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, part three, mass oscillating on a spring. Let's take a look at that picture. This is very similar to the pendulum problem. Uh, both graphs are sinusoidal in nature. Okay, number eight, was the acceleration constant or changing? Same as with the pendulum, because the slope of the velocity graph is constantly changing, so is acceleration. Number nine, was there any point in the motion where the velocity was zero? We can look at either graph where the slope of the position graph is zero, then the velocity is zero. And I can see that that aligns with my value of zero. This vertical line here aligns in time with my velocity of zero here and here and here and so on. Number 10, was there any point in the motion where the acceleration was zero? Yes, that's going to be any time where the slope of the velocity graph is zero and that aligns with the midpoint. You can see that's the midpoint up here. 
of the oscillation. So in the middle of the oscillation of the spring up and down, it is moving the fastest in the middle and that's where it has zero acceleration. Number 11, where's the acceleration the greatest? That's going to be at the inflection point on the velocity graph. So that is at the extremes of the position graph. And number 12, how does the motion of the spring compare to that of the pendulum? Like I said, they are both sinusoidal in nature. Okay, part four, ball tossed into the air. Here is our graph. And number 13, was the acceleration constant or changing? And it's important that we only look at the time the ball is in the air and not being touched by my hands. So here I'm holding it level. Then I lower my hands slightly and I push with my hands, increasing the velocity of the ball until it leaves my hands. And how do I know it leaves my hands here? Because this is where now the slope of the velocity graph remains constant through this section of the graph, indicating that the acceleration is constant and there is a constant force acting on the ball. And that is acceleration due to gravity, the force of gravity. Our next unit will be examining forces and their relationship to acceleration. So for now, just know that because of this constant slope, I can tell that the acceleration is constant and thus this is where I am not pushing on the ball anymore. Only gravity is affecting it. As it rises in the air, there we go. There's my highest point. You can see that corresponds to zero velocity. And then as it changes directions and comes back down, the direction of my velocity is now negative, which is towards the sensor. And then as I catch it in my hands, I decrease the magnitude of the velocity to zero. On the way up right here at the very top and on the way down right here, they all have the same sign of slope. So the acceleration has the same sign the whole time and it's negative. You can see here, I, I fit a, a line to the graph, negative 9.6, very close to 9.8. Okay, number 15. Where was the velocity zero? We mentioned it already, it's right here at the highest point. And number 16, was there any point in the motion, in the airborne motion where the acceleration was zero? The answer is no, because the slope of the graph is negative 9.6 this whole time. Don't confuse at the top, the velocity is zero, yes, but the acceleration is still negative 9.6 in this case. It, it should be 9.8, but the equipment is not perfect and there is some experimental error, okay? Part five, dynamics cart on an incline. Let's take a look at our data. Here it is. Uh, number 17, was the acceleration while rolling constant or changing? So that's important, while rolling. So this region right here, that's when it's rolling. This region right here, that's when it's rolling. That's when it's rolling and so on. This region right here, this is when I push it with my hand. You can see the velocity goes from zero to some large magnitude. So it speeds up here while I push it. Then it's slowing down. The magnitude of the velocity is becoming less until it gets to the highest point right here, that's the highest point. And you can see that corresponds to a velocity of zero, okay? And then the magnitude of the velocity increases as it goes back down the ramp. That region right there, that's when the spring bounces, okay? This is when the spring bounces. Number 18. What did I discover about the sign of the acceleration on the way up? Here's the way up at the top and on the way down. So in that whole region on the way up at the top and on the way down, you see the slope is the same everywhere. 
So the acceleration is the same. Number 19, was there any point in the motion where the velocity was zero? Sure, here, and you can see that corresponds to the top of the, or the highest point, and right here. These points I'm not interested in because that is when the cart is bouncing and not only rolling. So it's only these points, this one, and this one, and this one, and so on. Number 20, was there any point in the motion where, when the acceleration was zero? Remember, we're only concerned about where the cart is rolling, so the answer to that is no. Number 21, identify when the cart was being pushed by your hand. I mentioned that already, it's right there. Number 22, rolling up the ramp, that's only this part, and rolling down the ramp is only this part. Number 24, mark the spot where it is highest on the ramp. So that's going to be that spot right there. And that you can tell over here when you highlight something on the graph here, it automatically highlights in the data table. If you don't see it, you're just in the wrong part of the data table. So look for it that way. Okay. I'm going to show you now what you can do. You can label the graphs. So that's what I've done. I've used these functions that are in the analyze menu up here. You highlight a section of the graph and then you uh, follow the directions to fit the curve or the straight line. So here you can see in the parabolic uh, paths, here's my equation for a quadratic. The coefficient on t squared is one half the acceleration. So here you see 0.237. Down here in the same region on the velocity graph, I get a slope of 0.47. That is the acceleration, right? 0.47 meters per second squared. Or I can double this number up here and come up with the same value for my acceleration, 0.47 meters per second squared. We already figured out question 24, which direction is the positive direction? And that is away from the sensor. So down the ramp, is the positive direction because the sensor was placed at the top of the ramp. And you notice for question 27, the last question 27, 0.47 is the slope of this part, 0.47 is the slope of this part, 0.47 is the slope of this part. So it doesn't matter that the bounces are getting shorter and shorter and not going as high up the ramp, the acceleration while it's rolling is the same every time. And that's because it has to do with what is the steepness of the ramp. It has nothing to do with how far up the ramp it rolls or how fast it's rolling, only what is the steepness of the ramp, which of course is the same throughout the whole experiment.